Hello everybody, um, this little intro -y bit here is just to let you know that, um, well I've been working at Wickham Art Centre recently, which is my local art centre, I kind of run the bar um, and also look after the social media and stuff and uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, but very exciting, we're launching YouTube, um, so I'm going to link to that below and uh, this is one of the videos that's going to be up there, we're actually hopefully going to get like a work experience person to come and join us and be basically a vlogger in residence for us. But yeah, definitely check out the Wickham Art Centre YouTube because there's going to be loads of super cool stuff uh, linked below. And um, this is the little vlog I did of our behind the scenes. Okay, hello everybody. I am Dane. I am the Wickham Art Centre social media manager. And I'm all alone in the old church, which is currently our exhibition space. Legend has it, this place is haunted by a ghostly apparition that plays the organ over there. That's not true by the way, I just totally made that up. So here we are in the entrance hall. So this is Debbie. This is a painting by Dan Wilson of Decreate. He says, Debbie is a staff nurse working in the A&E &E in Fife, painted as part of the Portraits for NHS Heroes project. Dan produced three works for Debbie and her team. This one will be sent to her in Scotland after this exhibition. Dan's also done something I'll show you in a second that's going to be donated to a local hospital. Here's our little welcome desk. Obviously, normally we have it outside. We've got some um, free masks in here made by Fran, who is our... Uh, sort of barmaid slash events manager. She's on maternity leave at the moment. Wondering over here, we've got some badges available. Uh, this is really cool. So this is um, the donations box and this was made by Dr. Caroline, who uh, did a lot of work helping to set up the event as well. But obviously, as you can see, it's all themed along with the lockdown. Here we have uh, Captain Tom Moore by Dan Wilson. So again, Dan Wilson D. Great, he's our artist in residence. Uh, I think this is really interesting, so I'm gonna read this out to you. So it says, uh, Captain Sir Thomas Moore became an iconic figure in April and May in the run-up to his 100th birthday. He walked laps of his garden to raise money for NHS charities, aiming to raise a thousand pounds. His fundraising efforts went viral, and within weeks he had become a household name, topped the UK music charts, and raised over 32 million pounds. This incredible story inspired artist Dan to paint his portrait, not as the elderly man we saw on the news, but as the young chap in 1940. After doing the initial sketch, however, Dan decided that the paint was not required and that the pencil drawing conveyed an interesting mood, provoking thoughts about memory. When we are young, are we sketches of our future selves? This work will be donated to Wickham Hospital after the show. So here we have our little one-way system. These are all by Jan Gasker. Really fantastic paintings here. So uh, initially I was a figurative printmaker, but now I'm an oil painter, producing portraiture and plein air landscapes. The paintings I produced over the lockdown are based around Finnings Wood adjacent to our property. Parts of the wood are completely wild, which has been helpful for me to work in complete isolation. Just nature and me. And again, a lot of these artworks are for sale. Uh, let's, well, let's have a little look at this one. So this is Dan Robinson Miller. He says, I make it a habit to sketch or paint every day with no set agenda on what I create during that time. It's interesting to see what themes or ideas come up naturally. Over here we have our listening corner. So we have lots of local poets here. We've got some Jasmine Harris, Barbara Sadassi up here, uh, some Robert Frost that was presented by um, Mervyn Cook, who comes to a lot of our open mic nights. He also has a book out called Oh Derry Boy. We have some zines down there as well. One thing to mention, by the way, is that these have gone up into an online little SoundCloud gallery. So we're going to have a wrap up after the event uh, that will be up on our website. And you'll be able to listen to all of the uh, submissions for the spoken word corner as well. So uh, do check that out. And also, we're potentially looking for somebody to sort of be our in-house uh, vlogger and to make videos like this, um, I guess, in partnership with us. Um, potentially to do some marketing work experience and that sort of stuff as well. So email me on dane at wickhamartcentre.com if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. This is some uh, drone footage from during the event by um, Simon Falconer as well, who's a long-term friend of the Art Centre. He does uh, photography as Falcon Photos as well. So we thought we'd include this to give you a slightly different point of view uh, over the exhibition. These are DW Designs by Denise Williams. Uh, all of Denise's glass pieces are individually designed and hand-finished in her Chesham studio. Very cool. 
Over here we have Ed Sylvester. I can recognize his painting style here. Uh, sorry, his photography style. He's got a very unique style. I think they look really, really cool. Um, posters are available as well. Uh, for example, this poster of Wickham Village. Uh, so yeah, he was the winner of the 2019 National Trust annual photo competition. His image was used informally in handbooks and has been used countless times in print and web. Um, I also see him a lot. He does displays at places like the Bellevue. So this is Jasmine Sheba Parsons. She said, during this chaotic time, I didn't know how to properly capture all the emotions that I've felt whilst injustice was displayed towards black and brown people. The rise of voices across all generations to protest for the Black Lives Matter movement made me want to honor the people around me. I created this multi-faced piece to display the people that have inspired me in life, but particularly during this lockdown. And it's great, um, again, she's contributed some poetry over to the listening corner. We have Cloaked in Clay. These were today's uh, Instagram spotlight. Freedom is a crowd. Lockdown that COVID. Uh, Venetian mask, not PPE. Flying unicorn escaping the COVID. These are great little captions here. Over here, we have Mark Page. I really like this, actually. This is, uh, look, holiday cancelled. So uh, he says, beach combing has long been a favourite activity of mine, especially on one on holiday with the wife and dogs. And uh, he says, however, this, this year was very different. For many, ourselves included, it felt like summer was cancelled as soon as Matt Hancock said as much on ITV's This Morning. So COVID-19 put pay to our usual seven-day break in one of Paul Perot's quaint little fisherman's cottages, and our holiday was cancelled. However, as a reminder of happier times, I put together this little objet trouvé. I hope you enjoy looking. And Mark's also a photographer behind Faces of Wickham. This is a Calculator. Slogans from Modern World. Limited numbers of prints are available on black and white paper for £10 each. He's got a little guest book here I like as well, and obviously it's put due to COVID-19, I purposely haven't left a pen. Here we have some of the tree folk. So these are by Victoria Snaith and Dreadfuls Theatre. Uh, Victoria Snaith is a theatre maker and visual artist creating work that explores the space where nature and metropolis meet. These are from Bubblegum Print Studio. I really like this one, look at that, I like that. <laughs> Mind you, I like baths, so. I mean, if that was me, I'd probably have a book out in front of me. <laughs> and so these are some suitcase theatres by Dreadfuls Theatre. Proud makers of devised theatre, inspired by folktales and fairy stories, we combine puppetry, physical storytelling, and unusual spaces to create imaginative and magical worlds. Neil Marshman, a visual storyteller, he's one of our sort of photographers in residence. He comes to a lot of our events. Uh, this is something that Dan, Dan Wilson worked on. Again, Decreate. So these are some of um, his original artworks as well that he did with Rory Clark. I uh, don't know if you can quite see the details on them. Some of them are coloured as well. Really beautiful. And uh, you can find those online at martianmicklefield.com as well. He's here by Ruth, who is... I don't know what, her, her, she's the boss anyway, that's what her job title officially is. So she said here, um, and, and I believe this was her first time ex exhibiting as well, and I mean, I think they really fit in along with everything else, so she's very talented. So she said, at a time of few distractions other than the worry about a global pandemic, I found that experimenting with different painting techniques has been a way of calming the sense of unease. I was drawn to wide open landscapes as a counterbalance to a world which had become, overnight, so much smaller, and have enjoyed breaking away from realism into the uncertainty and, at the same time, freedom of abstraction. Working with textures and layering, I've been amazed with the ways in which unexpected outcomes can surprise and enhance original intent. He's by Charlie here. Uh, so Charlie said, I, want, I went to stay with my mum and dad through lockdown and started my creative journey by painting rainbows, making Easter bonnets, book hotels, and kites. Inspiration for my artwork came from looking at the wildlife and flowers in my garden, listening to music, and watching films. And here we have Dr. Caroline again. So this is uh, hanging by a thread here. And what's really cool about this is um, it's kind of based on this previous image as well. So it's cool how the two of them lock, like, you know, align together. But you can see how it's done by really thin paper and that's thread and the actual needle is still in there as well. So it's called hanging by a thread. I think that's very cool. We have some multimedia stuff over here. And um, Mike, our chairman, has got an installation here. But alas, uh, he's obviously not here because I'm here all alone. These are by L127, he's a street artist, so he actually is putting these up sort of out and about. He says, none of these are for sale, but if you spot them in the wild, so to speak, you're free to take them home. Teekster, he's a Muslim artist, so it says here, by blending the past with the present, he aims to renew the appreciation and spirit of Islamic art and culture. His ultimate aim is to connect communities and cultures and challenging the negative images and narrow perception of Muslims through the serene universal language of art. Here we have Sophie Watson and her swoodles. So they take their name from the fact that she is Sophie Watson and she doodles. 
there's lots of really great detail on these. They almost remind me of adult coloring books, except I think that's almost to devalue them a bit, you know? But they're beautiful. So we've got a pagan witch there. We've got a book of swoodles, very cool. Over here we have Stephen Colgan and some of his creations. Um, I particularly like this one. This one's called BC Before COVID. Uh, I actually saw him post about this about Facebook. So I was really, you know, pleasantly happy, I guess, <laughs> once, uh, once I found out it was going to be displayed here. Uh, so the art information here. One positive thing to have emerged from the pandemic is the realisation that there is an alternative to the old ways of working. We know now that many of us can do some of our work at home and enjoy a better work-life balance. Less commuting means that we can spend more time with our families, and it's good for the planet too. I'd like to believe that we have no longer need for the semi-robotic, 9 to 5, 40 hours per week office-bound commuter. In keeping with the ethos of lockdown, I built BC without leaving the house. Nothing was bought or ordered in. He's made entirely from upcycled items I found around my home. Among the things used were parts of a defunct lawnmower, plastic and cardboard packaging, phone charger cables, and a brain-shaped stress ball. We have Jackie Crabtree. She says uh, she's on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Carl Dowwood. Uh, he was born in High Wycombe and spent most of his early life there. Then he moved to Bristol to study art. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Hector Gomez. Born in Madrid in 1970. I was raised in High Wycombe from 73 to 77 when my parents left to return to Spain again. And uh, he's come back since 2009. Been living here since. Lydia Smith. Very talented sculpture. Uh, so she's got a stay-at-home sculpting kit that's available as well. Definitely give her a Google, lydiasmith.gallery. Uh, these are by Barbara Sadassi. In her own words, she is deeply into stories. She celebrates colour and line and loves the way they sing together. And then, yeah, we have, uh, this is the tired dressmaker's stand. So really cool handmade clothing, you know. Look at that mask over there. I believe a lot of these yeah, are available and stuff as well. All right, so that's a little bit of a behind the scenes of what we've got in the church area. I don't know what we're going to do with this video. Hopefully we can share it afterwards and uh, be a nice way for people to relive it. I obviously don't want to walk around talking and giving a guided tour uh, when we've got visitors here, but thank you so much for joining. Hit that like button, etc., and I'll see you soon. We're going backstage now, down to the crypt.